Hello again. Had some developments going on with this Mustang 2 clip under the Zephyr. A lot of people did mention it. Dude, that is too narrow, and I had to agree. My first thought was, uh, like I did on the rear, I was maybe going to put wheel spacers. The more I looked at it, it looked like it'd be almost a three inch wheel spacer to accommodate those rims, the police car rims. A little bit unsure about that. Uh, one thing I was considering is, you know, with a big diameter wheel like that set so far in, when you steer, is it going to contact anything? You know, nice diameter, it's not a problem with this clearance. A lot of times you'll have that or the rotor. These are reasonably small. But it was going to hit the inside of the fenders. I took a few still photos that Jamie can insert. It shows how they interfered with the inner fender well, and they looked really tucked in. You know, the way the back tires are, you can see that the skirt will accommodate that, but they can still come out a bit. The front tires were tucked way in. So I went ahead and ordered the size tire that I want to use, all four of the same size, and we're going to mock up a little different scenario. All the stuff that Jeff provided is really good. All this stuff is totally usable. Like I said, I think it's new. Just never put into service sitting around. I was looking at this. Look how thin wall that is. Mm -hmm. That's almost 16 gauge. Uh, for a light truck, like they were setting up, uh, a race car, etc. that that's appropriate. You see a lot of tea bucket hot rods made out of this material, but for a big, heavy, full-size Zephyr like this to run on these small frame rails, I didn't like that idea. So I started coming up with ideas, gussets, etc. And a lot of people were saying, you're not going to be able to steer that far because it, look how much stroke you have in this rack and pinion. So in other words, if this was much wider, like a stock Mustang II, you'd have a, a lot of stroke in your shaft. Some guys might understand that sequence scenario, but in layman's terms, they narrowed this thing. So you can see the seam right here. I'm not going to laugh because I'm 12. <laughs> Third grade humor all the time. <laughs> okay, I'm going to laugh. There's only a certain amount of stroke in that shaft. <laughs> So, so that truck, that's cool. Like, that makes sense, what they did. And they got this, it's called Sweet Manufacturing. So it's definitely like a street rod thing. I've heard of that name before. So these parts are all super cool, just not appropriate for the Zephyr. So I'm going to spin you right around. Turn right around and look at the table. Could I go in the direction of your finger? Works for me. Look at that <laughs> silver thing. Ooh. Aha! So this is a stock, I think, or or whatever. This is a different manufactured Mustang II style cross member. The same details, the top and bottom, but much wider. Let me show you on the tape measure. Some okay. people said, oh, well, cut that one and stretch it. And I was like, you know what? This is like 299 bucks, and it's brand new. So from pivot point to pivot point on this one is 22. And on this one, it's about 18, 19, 20, 21, 20. So it's, this was narrowed about four, four and a half inches right mm -hmm. through here. And you know, this work looks good. I'm not disputing that, but one thing I thought, see the way that this hangs over the frame rail here? Mm -hmm. Again, all these kits are a little bit different. But I think, look how this is maxed out on the slot. See these slots? Mm -hmm. So to get, the, uh, to get the camber right in the tires, they, they moved this all the way over. So it's out of adjustment. I think if they would have welded this here, it would have brought this spring orientation or this strut as it seems in the center. It would have brought that a little bit more vertical and it would have still offered a, a bit more adjustment in this so two birds in one stone scenario right 
I'll be able to reset the angle of this top cap and get a wider overall suspension. You know where that all starts with? Where? Disassembly. So I'm going to take this apart, put it all on the floor so we keep left, left, and right, right. Bring that over here, put it all back together. Let's begin. Pausing in the music montage, it just, I just figured out what Ian is doing. So he's taking these off of that and putting on that. Oh, very cool. Science. So then like with something like this, this is a clip, right? Well, this is a cross member. Okay. So could you use that technically on another project and you could just get these pieces Ah, cool. This cross member would be ideal for something that size, the Morris. So maybe truck. if you end up doing the Morris as the gasser that so many people want to see, you would just put that back in it and just, right? Yeah. No? Okay. But if you were going to say maybe put a V8 in the front of a VW Bug, not that I'd ever try to attempt that, <laughs> you know, a very narrow vehicle. You get your cross tank, you get your Mustang two components, and put this cross member in. Um, a gasser will have a, a completely different orientation on the front suspension. Got it. Back to the music. I was worried about also with the kits. Look how much room there is here. Is that bad? Well, it'll have to be shimmed up, but why was this so close? They belong together, that's why. What I'm seeing here is that this arm does go right up against that with a washer, so we're gonna have to shim the outside of that other one. Let's set that up. Yeah, so look how much space that is right there. Mm -hmm. Plenty of thread on there. We're just gonna have to get some kind of a washer set up, even temporarily. I don't have any washers. I'll have to get some, but maybe just a temporary spacer. I got that. Just for a mock up. Got that and a washer in there. Mock-up cam. Well, I had two of those rubber things. Now all I have is one. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I left it. All right, so in the end, I'm gonna have to get a proper steel spacer that will support that, but that's a good bottom arrangement for the moment. So, this is pretty wide, eh?
Yeah, I like that. So um, you see the way the original cross member is notched open for this to come through, right? Uh, the one I bought has none of that. Uh, it's just blank, which I thought was cool. So you could set this up in the middle of that slot, see? You put it dead center right there. That way we'll have adjustment both ways, whereas the other one, as you saw, pretty much out of room. So let's bolt that in right in the middle. And you know, if I was you, I would try to do this on a proper table. I'm not trying to set something up for ultimate visual advantage. <laughs> Oh, that thing was pretty tight. Yeah. Cool. Repeat on the other side. So I'm just looking at this space here. Trying to match it up between the two. Cool. So looking at that space, again, I can adjust this infinitely from this point on, but we have a good rough estimation. Everything is held. Because you can take this and swivel it like that, move it up and down. You know, there's a whole thing with the alignment. But uh, before I weld, I'm going to make sure that these are centered side to side or equal side to side. But just to say, that's coming in here, just, you know, just eyeballing it, right? This looks reasonably vertical. Try to get both look reasonably vertical. I'm just trying to hold these sort of in place. So now we got that, that. Now I'm going to measure wheel face to wheel face and see where we're at on that fender. So from the hub to the rotor is one and a half. So we're going to measure this pretty much on top. And add three. We got 53. The box said 56 on it. It's 56, hub to hub. So let's measure these fenders. Would you be a deer and hold this? You want me to help you? Hey, I only got two hands. I was trying to reach a 56 inch spread. Hold it right there. There's no way I could achieve this solo. So we have 69 inches total outside. But center to center, let's just go off these headlight dealies. It's 51. So our hub centers are going to be five inches wider than that. So we're going to go two and a half to 56. So our hub centers are here, but then we have an inboard spacing on the tires. This is where the math starts to happen. Let's put those tires on. It's going to get even sketchier. I like it. I mean, is it even a show unless something falls on the floor? Nope, that's why I got on my cowboy boots today. I knew. What could possibly go wrong? So see, this measurement, this face, it's all relative as to how deep the inset is on the wheels, the steel rims. So. See how bad we can mess this up. Might hold. Hmm. This might be the first episode where we don't weld anything. Yeah, I got the weld stuff. <laughs> it's been in four projects like this, has its challenges. We got a uh, all the tables, all the everything filled up, so where I'm at. See how far in that hub center appears? Mm -hmm. 
let's measure the center of the tires. Do you like how I misplaced my tape measure and markers 500 times mm -hmm. during every episode? Well, you do have a remedy for your marker. Let's have a little thanks session, shall we? Mm -hmm. I've yet to figure out, well, the tape measure has its little clip on it, right? I should know better than to just clip it, but someone sent me this. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty groovy, right? Mm -hmm. You feel like I should talk or something. Then there's these. The marker holster. You can find them on Amazon. This isn't a product endorsement. Somebody just sent them. The instructions are very clear. I guess you don't even need a cap. Nope. Boom. <laughs> yes, it works perfectly. <laughs> Well, what we thought was pretty cool about it was the inventor is a tiler, much like the inventor of eye muffs. So you tilers, you guys and gals really get inventive and resourceful with your... I need one that fits I... on the eye muff. Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. I think I just created a critical life hack. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. I might that, be getting carried away. That one might get a little messy. But that wow. one. Look at all this gear. I guess. I mean, I gotta say, I didn't even I didn't even expect this thirty five seconds ago. But here we are. Thank you. Now, a tape measure. <laughs> Where did I put that? Found your tape measure. <clears throat> All that can get you worked up. That was a good integration. Thank you. Thank you. So from the center of the top... Read that number. 52. Look at this. <laughs> Ta -da. Almost dead on. No wheel space. I like that. How do you feel? I like it. All right. Now, since I've only done other one, I've only done other one thing. <laughs> I've only done a, one other Mustang 2 clip installation, and that was a kit that was retrofit directly to this uh, early Chevy truck. So this being universal, where did I put my marker? <laughs> and I found your other tape measure. It's on the car. This being universal, we're going to have to create some kind of notch like we see in those other parts, you know? But... The critical thing is, from this point to this point, I think matters, or at least from here to here, the height. So I'm assuming that the, the yellow on the earlier one is set up properly in that regard, because it looked okay to me. I did find something online. I'll probably do a little bit more research, but let's measure that one and see what the measurements are. Because... I think this is probably two by three. Yeah, a lot of people use that for hot rod chassis, so it's two by three, thin wall. So just to say from that whole edge, roughly from the center, it's about a nine inch rise, give or take, right? So from here, yeah, it's gotta come up at least an inch and a quarter to get to nine inches. But um, what if I use the bigger piece of steel? You know, the Zephyr chassis, even though it's unibody, it does have these rails. See where we cut through? Mm -hmm. That's three and a half by probably three. 
Yeah, three by three and a half is what we're attaching to. So I think anything bigger than that vertical measurement would be adequate. Take a walk to the steel pile. There's some stuff out there. Steel chair. We're not talking about Jamie's bike rack. Nope. He's so cute. Ooh, look at this. Heavy metal. Now that's a frame rail. Watch out for snakes. I know. I was just thinking that. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> Heavy duty. Two by four. That's ideal. Two by four. So, uh, it's a bit rusty. We're going to clean that up. Uh, it's here and it's free. Thanks, Tom Taylor. I'm going to measure that Zephyr. This is the original chassis of the Zephyr that I cut out. So uh, that's at about 20 inches, a 20 inch section. So minimum, we're going to need 40 inches. But let's take a look at these measurements. Can I just take a moment to talk about the flowers? Look. Isn't it pretty? The flowers are in bloom. Uh, I think by this time tomorrow, this whole place is going to be yellow. You can yeah. see it all coming up. It's pretty neat. Right. So exploring on this, we can see that uh, this comes in right to the edge of that deal, right? And I guess that's what we're going to want to accomplish here. We're going to want to notch straight in and down from this point. Let's just see. So this piece here is about seven and eighth and seven and a quarter. Yeah, so that's exactly right. So we're gonna want to go right from right from this point, slice straight down. Uh, so that measurement on this piece is 23. So I want to measure this car and see where the 23 brings us. The inside of these frame rails are 27. So that's a four inch difference. You're gonna have two inches on each side of empty space when you bring in the 23. I'm thinking, instead of trying to butt right up to this, what if we brought the chassis rails, the new pieces, this new subframe, it's two inches in, what if we brought it straight back to here and attach there? So it's like an H without the center of it. We'll have this cruising all the way back. And then this piece here, will have a big cross member coming out to that piece. So we're locked, we can lock it back there. It's a little bit hard to describe in words. Let me draw it out. So just to say, your Zephyr is coming in with its rails like that, 27 inches apart. Right. That's the firewall side. So our new piece is going to be 23. So what I'm talking about is bringing them inside like this, right? So 23 is this dimension. So there's two inches in here, 24, 25, 26, 27. So when these come through, they will be bonded both here and here. And if we're feeling it, we could even do that or plate it. So it just it just sticks right in. Mm -hmm. And you got your new cross member, you got your tires, you got all that stuff. And then the engine is in this general area. Does that add up? I like it. The math adds up. Instead of the 20 inch stub that we removed, I think we are looking for, let's measure 23 up here. I know that this frame tapers a little. Oh, it actually only tapered. No, it got wider. Interesting. So it's wider at the front than the rear. Oh no, my bad. That's the inside measurement. So outside is 33. And outside here, 28, yeah. 
So I think measuring from that firewall, we can always chop these off a little bit if we need to, but let's just say 31. So we'll make two pieces at 31. We'll begin the operation. That's a really long piece. I think I'm going to cut it at 62 out there and then split it here and clean it. So this saw is nice and square. I'll just uh, I'm gonna recut all the ends. I left it a bit long from just that rough chop with the grinder. I'll make two 31 inch pieces. Let's see on the inside of this how clean it is. So we'll clean up the outside and it'll be fine. So you can see the wall thickness on this is about one eighth inch too. So that's appropriate for this chassis piece. Uh, there's that 16 gauge, a little bit for the weight of the car, a little bit light. All right, so we got these two pieces equal lengths. Now we're going to need to clean them and jig them up so that they are parallel and uh, yeah, all that too. Yeah, set up a little place to work here. Get the acetone and other explosives out of the room. A nice can of gas over here in the corner. That's something else you should be thinking about in a workshop all the time. About what? Well, that can of gas sitting in the corner with the cap half off. You don't want that around the welder. Uh, the acetone I had on the table, you don't want that on the table. And check out this battery. I had a friend explode a battery once. He was welding above. Slag was falling on the battery and it exploded and shot acid all over us working in this vehicle. Yikes. Pretty pretty gnarly. Well, and since we're talking about safety. Don't try this at home. <laughs> on the Jeep build, everyone, a lot of people commented about the ball and towing and pulling people out and the ball breaking. We know. And we, we appreciate that. And I'm glad that other people said that. But Ian and I are very well aware. And I have no desire to tow or pull anyone out of mud. Because I really only want to go to the grocery store and to King of the Hammers. And really, what's that Jeep going to tow? Nothing. Um, remember that guy at Burning Man this year? He got killed. Yeah. Tow hitch broke off, went right through his windshield. Yeah. Had to be quite the sight. We're well aware, but thanks for the thanks for the warning. But don't worry. I know Ian and I seem loosey goosey, but we're actually we're actually not. <laughs> we're quite uh, safety conscious, especially me being a former ER trauma nurse. I gotta say that trauma nurse career must have been pretty traumatic. Yeah. No thanks. I think I'm going to clean these up way better in the long run. We're going to do a quick little scuff. Generator full of gasoline <laughs> sitting right under the table. I'll just move that outside for the moment. All right, that's still quite a ways from a solid cleanup, but I'm just going to. Um, Clean this wherever I weld it for now. So what we we're saying was the inside, as I remember, was 23. Let's double check. So with the wall thickness of one eighth, it's 23 and a quarter. I'm going to cut two pieces of 23 and a quarter temporary spreader material. But what we want is these to be square. So this table is square and flat. So I'm going to set them in like this to start. And I'm going to put the framing square on the table to ensure that they are square and parallel. That ain't square. That's square. Locked. Locked. And then 
you know, this table edge right there. So we're at the table edge. And square. There. Here. At the table edge. Square. So I'm going to uh, pack this just as is, because again, this is all coming out. This is just a holder. That's where I'm going to put the mock-up. Mock-up. Insert. The old mock-up insert. Let's just do a little quick C. Check. Set outside is 27. All the way through. Yep. In the corner. 41 and the smidge. Yep. What more do you want? Let's weld it. Table's flat. Those surfaces are flat. Stack it. <laughs> Sorry. Seriously, I not once thought of that. So Ian and I were just uh, cleaning off our welding helmets, and what did I just tell you? You want to use the air for dust. And spiders. And spiders. And Ian said he's never thought of that. Not once, every day. So now, my helmet is spider-free, as is Ian's. I don't think it's Black Widow season, though, right now. Once it's really heated up, yeah. yeah. I have a funny Black Widow story. Tell me. Oh, this is cool. I could see my reflection of me in the camera, in your helmet. Oh, really? I'm watching <laughs> me in your helmet. <laughs> Multi-dimensional. We'll skip the Black Widow story. <laughs> Squirrel. Come on, ground. Don't fail me now. So now this, I got tacked on three spots on each four spots. Now three spots. Tack relative to the table. So yeah, this is uh, relatively, well, it's definitely parallel and relatively strong. We can transfer this to that. Now I'm going to take those tires off. Lighten up the load over there a little bit. Okay, let's see if I could get this really light. I'm gonna try to take these uh this whole thing right apart. It looks like about 13 sixteenths. The whole thing with what I was setting up was just a quick assessment of uh is this gonna work? So knowing that it will now, I'm gonna try to knock that spindle and everything right out of town. With any luck, it won't be any tighter than the rest of the hardware. Look at that. You got luck. Yeah, this is definitely just pre-assembled, which is nice. It's all, as I said, new stuff. This is a real finger pinching event if you do it wrong. Yeah. Can't wait to hear the debate on uh, how we're doing such wonderful work to this old car with rusty parts, right? Everything we're doing is used, which I like. Anybody with a million dollars can just dump a million dollars into a car, right? Mm hmm. We ain't doing it that way. Well, I think there's other builders that are on YouTube who have had to deal with those comments as well. And guess what? We all still going to do what we're going to do. <laughs> That's the way I feel about it. Because nobody has a million dollars. Well, not this guy. Not until we get 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but it would help if you subscribed. Alrighty, so you can see how that frame is going to set down in here. But the question remains. The question remains, how deep do we cut this to get that larger material at that dimension? Mmm.
I don't really see any interference. Check this out, I'll just use this. This is the cutoff piece. My only concern is, it's actually not even that much difference. See the difference? Mm -hmm. So if we were to set this up along the top like this one is, it's gonna hang down lower by that an inch. And the only thing I could see causing concern with that is this arm as it travels up. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of, I don't think, I don't think that's a problem at all. Do you think it's a problem at all? I have no clue. <laughs> Let's try it on this side. A little better reference. It's gonna, oh no, look at that. No, check this out. So if this is here at the top, this is all gonna foul before it even contacts that. Mm. We're good. So we're gonna notch this out because then that measurement here. Let me guess. <laughs> so we're going to need uh, about two from the top. Oh, look how big these hats are. Yeah, we got tons of room here. Awesome. So we could just use this as a tracer. And I think we might as well. That's going to sit right in there. We get a straight edge and a marker if I can find one. They're in the box. Ah, right up to there. So we're going to want to cut that to that. Yeah. Do the same here. Come across on the other side. Then another. Square? Nope. Look at that. It's not square. Not by much. Probably something to consider. I didn't consider that. They're all the same. So once that sets in, you look down the bottom. Oh, it's almost minimal. You can't even see the difference. It's within microns. Then I'll probably just cut this down because that's not doing anything yeah are we all still here yes 23 to there 23 and a quarter my mistake because now we're there 23 yes only three hundred dollars more if i screw it up you've got this i think so i built a couple things every time. let's see that's going to drop straight down pair to cut Probably sand this a little bit more. 
but uh, this ideally is going to be adjustable in the car because once we put that on. But I think uh, I think we're going to end this. We're at a pretty good amount of time, huh? Yeah. So before I get into this, I'm going to clean this paint up. This is painted. This is rusted. I'm going to clean the heck out of both of those. Next time we're going to get into the top hat placement, these things that support the spring and the upper control arm, and then we'll put it under the car and see how it fits. But a lot of progress from that thing that wasn't going to work to this thing that's going to work. Not going to work. Going to work. Bigger, stronger, better than before. Welcome back. We are cleaned up, ready for part two. Spent a little time dialing this in so that that um, frame fits a bit better. If you look on the table here, I got most of the rust accounted for. Uh, I used two of these tools. One is a uh, barrel brush thing. It's got this really cool abrasive on it. And then I used the fine wire wheel on the big Makita. So just these two, you saw the state that this was in earlier and uh, nice scuff with that uh, abrasive and then the wire wheel cleaned it up. So this material is, you know, it's in better shape than the rest of the car, albeit it's not new material. So that's where we're at. I like it. Also cleared this up a little bit. It was just minor sanding to get this to want to fit. Now it's tight, but it fits as it should. So you see the similarities between that setup and this one. This is just uh, wider and stronger. So now it comes down to this top hat. So just as we notch this lower piece, we have to notch this upper piece. And I am paying attention to the measurements that are on that earlier piece. So these look to be centered directly above this in that one. So I think we'll just do the same arrangement. It looked to be about a one and a half inch space. So let's compare. So from here, let's just put it, oh, this is bigger, I think. We got one and a half to the inside. Oh no, look at that, it's the same. Perfect. So we'll keep our interior measurements at one and a half, and we're going to section this so that it sets down. And it looks to be, see the way that other piece was hanging over? I think we're gonna try to just get that to there. Keep that angle minimized, that way you can utilize all of that adjustment. Question is, how low? Let's look at this one. We're coming from this support to this here is eight and a half. Right to the center of that top cap. So here, oh, we got a lot. So this is going to be sitting just about there. So from there up here, about 11 and an eighth. You want an eight and a half. That's considerably lower. I have to drop that weight in. Hmm. So will that lower the front of the car? No. No, um, the ride height of the car is going to be determined by where in the vehicle, uh, like we were doing with the rear cross member, we were bringing it up into the floor. We're doing something similar with this. So the ride height will be established by two things. The airbags, where they're positioning the A-arms, and then this, where it's sitting in the car height-wise. So there's a lot to think about. But if we're saying that this... So that's going to go there. We want this to be eight and a half right there. So yeah, it's a considerable chunk we're going to have to take out of that. But that doesn't scare me. I got a grinder. So let's do the math. 11 and 1 eighth minus eight and a half. 11 and 1 eighth minus eight and four eighths. Got to break it down in eighths. Three eighths. Run out of marker. 
Never going to make it. Three and three eighths? Or is it two and three eighths? You can see it. I can see it in my mind. See, it's a little tactic magician she used so that the audience stays enthralled. So it's either two and three eighths drop or three and three eighths. Looking at this, I'm going to guess it's a three and three eighths drop. You know why? Because by rough guesstimation, look at this, at eight and a half, eight and a half, that's two from the top. I told you. I'm thinking all kinds of crazy thoughts. Watch this. We're going to measure down two. all mixed up. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut that right there and see what happens. I'm going to bet we are in the ballpark. We want, again, eight and a half. There's a way to do this if you're a mathematician, but that ain't me. We're going to want eight. Does that not line up? Mm hmm Ask me how I calculated that? I can't describe it. <laughs> Did it work out? Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Let's do that. Let's see. Because we learned that that stamping was not square. Ooh, this one is good. We're in luck. Okay, so... It's because I'm that guy. That way. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Where we need a third hand. All right, do the same to that other one. Okay, so that's what we were getting towards in mimicking that other piece. Uh, yeah, we were at eight and a half. So again, see this is flushed up. That way at those measurements we were looking at, remember the arms were very much towards this. So by moving this that way, now they're going to be somewhere in the center. So a little more adjustment. That was on a coil springs, so it was a static ride height. Being that this is on airbags, there's a lot of there's a lot of change as the thing cycles up and down. So having this opportunity uh, to adjust once we decide our final ride height, that'll really help to have a maximum adjustment. So yeah, um, we can't weld this together because we don't know where in the car this sits, right? And also, um, where this sits so now it's time to put this whole pile of stuff this is where the balancing act you see me do the balancing act before 
this, this is where we really start to stack the parts. We're gonna have to bolt the tires on and everything. So it's gonna be a lot of flipping, flopping, slapping, jiving, sliding, cussing, busting, bitten. Kra! Kra! We're gonna make it. It's gonna work. All right, let's remember what the front of the car is. Those stubs go to the rear. Now, where were we? Left is left and right is right. That was facing that way, right? That side is that. See where we're going with this? Starting to look like the drawing. Starting to look like the schematic. Every step of the way. There, for reference. That's our plan. All right, that's gonna go there. Put a frame in place. Like a glove. This is where it gets real ugly. I'm just gonna start coming apart every time I move it. But I don't know a better way. I'm sure some of our audience knows. Could I tack this and do it all? Yes. Do I want to tack this and do it all? No. I'm gonna fuss with this ratchet strap and watch it all come apart 53 times before <laughs> we're done. <laughs> Why don't you want to tack it? Because I'm not a welder today. Got it. But to seriously answer your question, um, this is going to be moved all over the place. So I'm hoping that gravity will just hold this as the tire lifts it up. Let's see. No, it ain't. I'm gonna have to put that strut in there. Gravity will hold this, so I could slide it but uh, it's going to need something that mimics the spring. So this is just a placeholder for either the coil springs or uh, ultimately what I'm gonna use is airbags in here. That will also add a little bit of structure to what we're up to here. So yeah, I don't want this to swing up. So, oh no, the whole thing's just gonna swing up anyway. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, I don't know. First time doing all this. I was thinking that the straight rod might lock it up, but we'll see. No difference. Raise this to the floor jack. Might let the tire go on. Let's see. Nope, that's what I was talking about. Uh oh. How do we get this on? Looks so easy on TV, doesn't it? Yes. It sure does. Why aren't you done, Ian? All right. There we go. If we had set parameters or measurements, i.e. a blueprint, we would set all this up, but it's just straight, straight off the experiment table. So if anyone's a professional Mustang II subframe installer, now's your time to chime in. Because I could use a little hand for advice on this part. This is the only way I can see doing a complete mock-up is having tire height, suspension width, set on the floor, and lower the car over it and shift everything into position. So there's no uh, rack yet, steering rack, so there's no tie rods. The tires are just free to flop. If you've ever really flopped your tires around, you're going to see. It's going to be all over the place. And there's going to be some squeaking, there's going to be some clanking. Try to put this whole thing. I heard the squeak. There was the clank. 
There's another squeak. There's another squeak. Some semblance of composure. You get a couple blocks. Try to shim this up off the ground. Because we can always move the car a bit. To there. Lower it down a bit. For those two. It's going to rotate forward and down. Yeah, so that's got to come up. Maybe an easier way of doing this would have set, been to set this on two really long rails. And just weld it on and then cut the rails to fit, but I didn't think about that until just now. Been around the block a few times. I synced it. All right, so I'm going to try to shift this car a little bit forward. It's definitely not in the wheel arches. This is actually darn near perfect. I don't know where that weird measurement was coming out with a two inch space between that. Look at that. It slides right between. Oh, because I was measuring the inside. Look, these are two inches. So that's actually perfect. Did you make a goof like you didn't even mean to? <laughs> well, it was just in measuring. You know, I was thinking that uh, it was going to be uh, two inches narrow, and the outside measurement was where I was at. That's perfect. The car's still got to come forward. Looks good. How's that tire look? Close to the... Yeah, it's got to come forward. All right, so... That's where the math really starts to get interesting. All right, so look at this. Let me get my pointer. We got all this space in here. And we were thinking that this rail was going to come back so let's shift that into position and see this is why i didn't tack that so we're going to be able to take this theoretically if i lower that a little bit slide that back get my big hammer Touching anything. Remember when I told you it was going to be a balancing act? Yes. Here we are. Balancing. Well, we got something. It's a long way from where we want to be. So the whole idea here is going to be now, with these pieces interfering, the car and the new structure slicing through and finding the happy medium where they join up so that the car goes as low as possible and the tires stay where you want them. Set that like that. Back down. See these little hats. They have to set in like that. All right, so this is where we start. Um, car looks 
relatively even all the way around. It's nice, really nice that this, this frame, this is a little doubler right here because there was a steering box. But once I take this plate off, this will slide right in. Like it'll weld right to it. That is really good news. So I'm going to start cleaning. I'm going to start prepping. And uh, next time is where the tack welds actually happen. So you can see the car is still taller than we want it. But that's all going to come together. We did both of these shoots in one day, and I'm pretty much done with this. Stay tuned next time. We'll make some real progress. Compare this to the pictures, the still photos. Jamie can insert them again. So check out the orientation of these tires. And just make sure that that's even. Yeah. So the tire's looking much better in the wheel well. Before yeah. they're almost gone. They're disappeared way in there. So plenty of room to steer, even when it's low. It's a lot of work to swap this out, but carry on. Thank you.